2016 go that girl is a real crowd please i know it's hard to say but let's be honest here there's no way we're gonna keep living life like 2016 was the peak of everything like at some point we just gotta admit that the year is overrated all right i refuse to believe that 2016 is this goaded year so much that i'm making a video about it however i will admit 2016 had some good music <laughs> I'm currently living in the year 2023 and it feels like music is empty. Keep it, keep it. Nobody has really released anything outside of a few artists here and there and it's been overall pretty dry in terms of music. I mean, all I'm saying is that as it relates to high profile mainstream hits, I am not remembering any of these songs on the charts. In fact, some of the biggest songs in 2023 include a cover song of an 80s song, a cover song of a 2004 song, and a 2016 song. There's really just not a lot going on right now, but back in 2016, you had everything you could want to have. I get those goosebumps every time. Thanks to the rise of digital streaming and music, great things developed, and we really got to see the power. Those mad artists is coming out like, like, um, Blue Uzi Vert, um, who else? Kodak Black, Tony One Savage, etc., etc., all that, bro. Prove it. It's in 2016. Although he is currently a. Drake is still hot, Future is still hot. Chance the Rapper used to be good, and in 2016, he was having this unprecedented breakout year. It was the rise of the underdog in a way. And that was really the theme for the year. It's the reason why a lot of people got behind that SoundCloud wave that popped off in 2016. But think about it like this. The underdog was winning throughout the year. Uh, the Cavs came back down 3-1. the Kobe Bryant retirement game, you know, the Warriors, like, like having 70, 73 and, and nine win, winning, um, win streak and, um, and the Cavs, um, winning Cavs and Warriors final games and the Cavs end up beating the Warriors, you feel me? came back down 3-1. Frank Ocean comes to mind with his whole, like, finessing the, the, the system story. Scamming people out of, like, $20 million or something. I don't remember. Now, I will say, Blonde is amazing in its own right, but part of the aura that it has is that underdog story, however you want to look at it. And that story specifically was like, thanks to the internet, I am not gonna lie. And I'm not saying that the internet was created in 2016, but would a song like Black Beatles catch on the way that it did in any other period of music? I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but probably not. Or, if you don't like that example, would Bad and Boogie catch fire in any other period oh, yeah. of music. I don't remember people playing that shit, in, shit in, in, when I was in school, bro. Like, Migos and shit. Wake up, drop down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that song. That song is fire, though. And Lil Uzi was featured in that song. Maybe, but definitely not how it happened in 2016. But anyways, uh, I think a lot of 2016's hype just comes from the music alone, and I don't think 2016 was that special, but I, I can see how other people may think it is, because like, Beyonce released Lemonade, Rihanna released Anti, Kanye West released The Life of Pablo, Drake released Views, Childish Gambino dropped Awaken My Love, Bruno Mars did 24 Karat Magic, The Weeknd released Starboy, do I need to go on? Because I will. J. Cole released For Your Eyes Only. David Bowie, Black Star, A Tribe Called Quest, We Got It From Here, Thank You For Your Service, Ariana Grande, Dangerous Woman, Anderson Pac, Malibu, and, and lastly, 
but not least DJ Khaled dropped an album but you already know about that and I'm not saying that those albums are all masterpieces or anything but when people look back and they see how many stars dropped an album in 2016 compared to now where Frank Ocean doesn't even do a whole concert I can see why the nostalgia creeps up but I just want to say that in 2016 people hated these albums maybe not all of them but 24 Karat Magic got like criticism for winning a Grammy. Views was considered to be Drake's worst album. The Life of Pablo was considered to be like very not good. And For Your Eyes Only basically damaged the reputation of J. Cole for years. Still though, people look back at these albums fondly. And I guess it's because life was just great. Stranger Things came out, um, Pokemon Go came out, the random clowns that terrified people for a few months came out. Although they did disappear after a while for some reason. Netflix was essentially at their peak. Netflix and show jokes were at their corniest. And Vine was dying. So, you know, the world was all good. Except that it really wasn't. Majority of people did not fuck with 2016 back in 2016. If you go back to look at what people were saying at the end of the years to like wrap up the year. There's also mad shit that happened in 2016 as well, bro. You know, the, the police brutality, you know, like. There was, there was police brutality, police like killing like black people and all that stuff, killing like unharmed like people. Feel me? Back then, y'all remember that Alton Sterling um situation? The police killed him, bro. And hopefully, and and to the Falangio Castle situation. Yeah, bro. Those were that comes to mind. They're complaining about celebrity deaths, uh, election stuff, uh, Vine probably. So it, it, it makes me like question, do y'all seriously like 2016? Because the more I think about it, the more I think that y'all romanticize 2016 because life isn't like that anymore and that, that a quarantine will do it to you i don't know why people specifically chose 2016 to latch on to but i promise you if i made this video about like 2013 i could also make it sound as dope and epic and whatever because i don't know if y'all noticed but like it's essentially all the same but here's like my two reasons why i think people latch on to 2016 One being that they miss pop culture. For whatever reason in today's age, it feels like there is barely any type of traditional pop culture. And if it is, it's not as big as it used to be. I think it's a big reason for why the Barbie movie or a movie like Across the Spider-Verse were so successful with people. Those are the type of events that identify a year and remain relevant years into the future. And although that does exist still in today's day and age, it's far and few between. Obviously in years past there has been events, but I promise you, nobody wanted to talk about that Will Smith slap after like two days. It's just not something people want to talk about like that. On the other hand, you got like 2016 and they have like Snapchat dog filters, you know? So you tell me. Never use Snapchat in my life. I never use that. Uh, use Snapchat. So the other reason why I think people like don't want to let go of 2016 is the most obvious reason and it's nostalgia. We act like 2016 was the only year with good music and entertaining trends, except that's basically every year if we look close enough. Even like 2020, with as bad as that year was with the quarantine and stuff, people will look back and romanticize that year. I am not gonna lie to you. And you know, in a way, comparison is the thief of joy. When we compare a new year to a year that has years of nostalgia built up onto it there is no way you're gonna be like yes the year that i live on right now the time that is going on right now is better than the past and that's the problem with nostalgia essentially now, personally i indulge in nostalgia i'm addicted to that but i also gotta draw the line somewhere and my line is that we gotta let 2016 go talk about like something else i, I don't know Rolly on my wrist, Rolly on my beat, 30 on my waist, 30 T. Also, by the way, Vine was like terribly unfunny. I don't know why y'all romanticize that app. I'm talking. Hey, I'm a gangster. I got my puff on my Tim's. I need my bacon, egg, and cheese too. You got the good shit for fun? Bacon, egg, and cheese. Anyways, these outros are gonna be like weird now. Cause yeah, this J Dill song that I'm playing is getting cleaned, and not only is it getting cleaned, it's getting blocked. 
I don't know what happened for it to do that, but I'm already looking for Jay Dilla beat replacements. But for now, shout out to me and shout out to Jay Dilla. Okay, that's that's the bid. Um, tell me like um. So yeah, let me know what y'all think about 2016, bro. Like, tell me what is your favorite moment, um, in 2016, bro, bro. Like in regards to like not just rap, but like. YouTube goes because you know YouTube was really popular at the time. You you got mad people that was born up that I, that have that I watched before. Um, um, not just YouTube basketball, wrestling, you know, baseball, football, all that, bro. So you know, let me know. Let me know, bro. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. Let me check it out. You are.